Mary Brown Robinson was born in McAllister, Oklahoma in 1911. She earned a scholarship to Shannard Art Institute in Los Angeles, where she met her husband, Lee Blair. When the two married in 1937, they saw themselves as fine artists, but as the country was in the midst of the Great Depression, Lee was forced to sign on to work with Disney. Throughout her life, Mary painted with watercolors and gouache, but at this time her style was still far from its final form. It employed fairly complex shapes and leaned into realism. Her use of color, however, was eye-catching, and word of it spread around the Disney studio where Lee worked. In 1940, Mary signed on to work at Disney, but she left the following year. Later in 1941, however, Walt and several animators, including Lee and Mary, of course, embarked on a goodwill tour of South America. The bright colors and bold patterns of South American cultures inspired Mary, and her art was changed forever. Her style became more geometric and flat, and she embraced bold colors, combining them in unconventional ways. Her style is innocent and appears simple, but has an undeniable charm born of its simple shapes and clever color choices. This change in style got Mary Blair a position at Disney, where she worked on several lesser-known shorts such as Johnny Appleseed, Susie the Little Blue Coop, and The Little House, as well as more mainstream classics like Cinderella, Peter Pan, and Alice in Wonderland. These three movies all have a distinctly Blair flair. Her concept art for Cinderella was very successful, from the positioning of characters to the camera angles used to the colors and patterns on the walls of Cinderella's home and the king's palace. Tremendous amounts of inspiration came directly from Mary's artwork. Many of her color schemes are evident in Peter Pan. The picture on the bottom right is almost exactly as it appears in the finished film, and though the Indian encampment looks quite different, all of Neverland borrows the childhood summer night feeling evoked by this painting. The varied designs on the teepees also show strong ties to South America. Mary's love of bold patterns did not stop there, however. It can really be seen in Alice in Wonderland, where it is accompanied by bright colors. The patterning on the cards, the off-kilter angles in the Queen of Hearts court, and the dramatic use of color throughout the film all point to a strong Mary Blair influence. She was eventually made a supervisor at Disney, but many of the animators and artists she supervised, mostly men, were disgruntled, not only by having a female supervisor, this was in the 1940s and 50s, but also because her style was so drastically different from their own. The style favored by most other artists at Disney at the time was soft, lifelike, and full of small details. Mary, on the other hand, made her paintings almost aggressively flat, sharply contrasted her colors, and didn't bother with pinpoint realism. Because of this difference, much of her style, unfortunately, never made it to the screen. In 1953, Mary Blair left Disney again to pursue graphic design and illustration and to spend more time with her two sons. She was quite successful, making advertisements for several companies and illustrating some little golden books, including I Can Fly, which is still in circulation today. She also discovered a love of painting children, inspired by her own two sons. In 1963, she was again called upon by Disney to help design the It's a Small World attraction, which was originally at the 1964 World's Fair, and focused on children around the world. Visitors were treated to Mary's colorful geometric take on architecture around the world and her simple, innocent depictions of children from every culture. The attraction was hugely successful, and was later moved to Disneyland. On July 26th of 1978, Mary Blair died, and it wasn't until 1991 that she was posthumously awarded the Disney Legend Award. In 1996, she was also given the Windsor McKay Award. To this day, she still inspires artists at Disney, as well as all the people that have seen the movies she influenced and the art she created. Mary Blair created extremely stylized art and made great use of color. While in this class we're still more focused on recreating lifelike images in black and white, we have begun to explore the realms of stylization, abstraction, and color. This is where Mary thrived, and where artistic expression really takes place. She put so much more into a picture than just replicating a scene. She put emotion and life into her pieces. 